Good morning, everyone. I'm getting hit pretty hard, so I'm just going to go ahead and just share this um, testimony I did with Roy E. Cups. Um, instead of reading this research I've got, um, but I'm going to have some good research roll out. Um, I've just been um, getting hit very hard, so I haven't really had time to study this, and I got the one on the um, implants coming up. Um, for the OTIs and what the implants are capable of and all that and um but you know I've been getting hit really hard so haven't really had time to put it together so I'm just going to share my testimony from Roy with Roy E Cups from October 2022 when I was in the hospital and here it is Hello everybody, uh, this is my mate Dave and Dave wants to tell his story. Um, he's having a bit of a shitty time at the moment and he's a good man and over to you Dave. My name is David Atkins and I'm a targeted individual since 2014. The story starts, um, alright I got married in 2000, what no, I got married in 2013 and Everything was going good with the marriage. I had worked at this chicken plant called Wayne's Farm since 2012. And I caught couple carpal tunnel working for Wayne's Farm. And um, I also, uh, well, let's just go to carpal tunnel. There were some other things too medically. So due to the carpal tunnel and some other stuff, I got what's called a FMLA. And the FMLA is where when you got a doctor's appointment that's from the doctor and it's it's a certified thing where when you're working for a company, the doctor gives you FMLA. It's an excuse where you can take a whole day off and go to your doctor's appointment and they have to pay you. Well, Wayne's Farm kept calling me in the HR telling me, well, look, we, we know you got carpal tunnel. You better not sue us, this and this and that or we're going to fire you. And they kept threatening me. So what I did was every time they would call me to HR and start threatening me because they were real worried about this lawsuit, I would record. So I actually got it on a recording of the woman in HR saying, look, we're going to go ahead and fire you because we know you're going to sue us anyway. So it's better to get you out of the way. And they fired me that day. I had it on recording. So what I did was I filed for unemployment. I had the recording. They did a uh, a meeting between me and Wayne's Farms, and I played the recording. And they ask, they ask uh, the dude, the unemployment asked the guy that was doing the inter that was on Wayne's Farm behalf representing them about it, and he all stuttered and stuff. So they granted me unemployment. Then I went to this lawyer named Adam, and I don't forgot his last name in Birmingham, and he took my case. For 33% and he's and he filed a lawsuit well after I filed a lawsuit all kinds of crazy stuff started happening once they found out uh, my home I, uh, me and my wife would come home and the door would be wide open uh, at night somebody would pick the lock open the door and leave it open and we would hear it and I'd run through the thing the door would be open then they start knocking on the windows at night being loud and I thought it was funny because every time my wife wasn't worried about it. And sometimes she would laugh when it happened. So uh, to make a lot. And then I started getting followed around. Um, they would leave notes on the door. You better watch out. This and that threatening me. And so one day I was, um, try. one day I was in the house. And I looked at my wife's phone and looked at her messages and it said, uh, we need you to do this. It's important. You got to get rid of this dude. So we were on the, I let it go. I didn't even tell her I knew about it. So we were on the interstate and five cars pulled. And this is in Iowa. This, we were in Iowa at the time. We had moved to Iowa because she was a nurse and she was making better money. But anyway, so what happened was we was on the interstate and these five cars pulled in the front of us and five in the back. And she looked over at me and said, I'm sorry, David, I got to do this. 
she pulled over and stopped the car and five cars pulled over and the five in the back pulled over. So what I did was I pulled my gun and I put it to her head and said, look, you need to pull off. Cause she looked at me and said, sorry, David, I got to do it. So she pulled off. Needless to say, after that, when, when we got to where we was going, I took my stuff and left. I ain't never seen her again, but she does, she does threaten me and stuff. So look, so boom, I left or whatever, and I was still getting unemployment on a card, and I took a bus from Des Moines, Iowa, and I was going to Tennessee to visit my dad. Well, on the on the bus, when I got on the bus to go to Kansas City, which was our first stop, these dudes sat by me on the bus and said, look, whenever, every stop we go from now on, you've got to get off with us or you're going to be in trouble. And they said, you better not move. So I went to the bathroom, locked myself in the door. Well, I really wasn't locking myself in the door. I was taking a piss, but I felt them jerking on the door. So I held the door for a minute. These police cars were lights. I seen them through the bus window. And um, hold on. And Do you want me to pause for a sec, mate? I'm trying to deny it. Okay. Do you want me to pause for a sec, Dave? So these police cars, their lights, I guess the bus driver saw them and pulled over. So when he pulled over, I felt the bus pull over. I I come out to the bathroom and went and sat next to a nun, believe it or not. And I got off at Kansas City and I didn't make my next stop. So I paid $20 for my bus ticket to be reinstated. The next day when I got to Springfield, the same guys, when I went to get on the bus to finish going to Tennessee, the same guys were getting on the bus, so I didn't get on the bus. So listen to this. This is how my B2K started. Okay, so so this is how my gang stalking started too, and I didn't know it at the time. So look, so I got stranded in Springfield, Missouri because I didn't get on the bus because the same dudes were getting on the bus. So what I did was I went to check – there, I, I declined it. I went to check in uh, at a motel, and this dude's like, yeah, hold on one second. And he's checking me in, and he gets a phone call. When he gets off the phone, he said, look, man, I can't check you in. There's no bed. So I thought that was weird because he started checking me in. So listen to this. This is Springfield, Missouri. So I went to a different hotel because this little area I was in around the bus stop station has like nine motels. So I went to check in at that motel. He starts checking me and they get a phone call. Then he tells me, look, we ain't, we ain't got no beds. I'm sorry. So I went to like six motels like this. And the every motel started checking me and, and got a phone call. I said, look, we're sorry. We ain't got no beds. And I actually had the last motel on recording, but that was years ago. I lost it of him doing that. I said, watch, watch what happens. I put it on recording. I said, watch what happens. When I go in this motel, he's going to get a phone call and say he can't check me in after he starts checking me in. So, boom. So, I leave the last motel, and it was a Best Western. And you got to figure, I'm in Springfield, Missouri. I left my wife in in Iowa. I hadn't seen her since. So, I start hearing these voices. It's my wife and her friend laughing, saying, he don't know what to do, does he? He can't even check into a fucking motel. We got him now. I can't wait to watch his ass get murdered. And I'm thinking that the voices are are in one of them cars. So I'm in the motel parking lot. This shit sounds so real. I'm looking in cars. Like at my wife and, and her friends in one of them cars. They wasn't in none of them cars. So, boom, that's how my B2K started. And it's been going on ever since. My wife and her friend laughing. Or my wife saying, look, we're gonna, I can't wait to see you kidnapped and murdered, motherfucker. And when I get gang stalked... <laughs> Oh, man, I'll be at Walmart. Tons of people be gang stalking me. And you know they're gang stalking me because every I, I can go to the other end of the store. The same people are there. They ain't got nothing in their hands. They're not shopping. Why are you there for 45 minutes following me and keep running into me and you ain't got nothing in your hand? You know what I'm saying? So that's, man, they gang stalk me everywhere. Um, and when and then when I'm getting gang stalked, I'll hear my wife's voice. Look, they're on you now. <laughs> Look at that dude. He's going to get you. And, you know, I think it's more than a threat. I do think I'll be kidnapped someday because, you know, she's I, she's actually texted me, texted me along with the V2K 
and said, don't worry, motherfucker, you're going to be um, killed. And I really think that because three months ago, she texted me. I don't even know how she got my number and started threatening me. So if anything ever happens to me and I stop being on Twitter, stop being in the TI community, then y'all know what happened. But anyway, let me get back to the story. Um, <clears throat> so, yeah, the gang stalking began. And the weird thing was when the B2K hit, I, I was panicking. And in the, the motels, I was exhausted. The motels wouldn't take me in. And so I'm walking. This police officer stops me. And check this out. And he has me stand still. And I'm standing still. And as I'm standing still, my brain starts frying, like getting real, real hot. But I notice if I'm moving side to side, it's it gets better and it lessens. So the police officer stops me and he's got a gun on me and uh, the other officer searching me and he's telling me to stay still and I'm feeling my head heat up real, real bad and I'm getting blurry vision. And I hear this officer ask, ask the, uh, this, this lady on the walkie talkie, hey, what is, our, what is his vital signs? Is it working? And she told him my vital signs. She said, yeah, it's, it's working. And I told the officer, I said, Man, why am I heating up like this? And um, I'm questioning him about it. And I'm noticing every time I move like that, and he's trying to keep me to move from moving like that, it, it's lessening. So I guess they were pointing something at me to make me heat up like that. Needless to say, when I asked the officer about it, he flipped the script, and they put me in a mental hospital for two weeks. So I got out of the mental hospital, and the stuff just, it's just been continuing, man, like, I'm blacklisted. Every 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 place I go, I'm blacklisted. They'll they'll tell me they ain't got no motel beds. If I ask anybody for directions, they won't give me directions. Uh, my GPS is hacked. So you know what I'm saying. So every time I go, I promise you, I'm blacklisted. Like every now and then, I'll get a good person that don't know what's going on. Um, you know. Uh, Every town I go in, I get gang stalks followed around, um, and they hit me with these dew pulses like that make my brain. It feels like an electrical shock goes through my brain, and then then it heats my head up like my brain's a frying uh, egg frying, and my vision will get blurry. And they'll do that off and on throughout the day, and and it could be it's really really painful. So you know what I'm saying. And then every time I'm about to make certain decision, V2K will come in and try to steer me off the right decision um back in 2018 i started putting youtube videos out and i man i was getting gang stalked i went to 22 different states Just every time i got off an airplane or everything anything the v2k would stop start the do weapons would start and the gang stalking would start um noise campaigns uh street theater if you name it they do it to me and um it's totally torture and in 2018, man, these people would keep messaging me out of the blue and telling me to come stay with them. So, and they're saying their TIs, and I would get there, man, and they would either gaslight me and tell me to get out, like after the first day, or you know what I'm saying, and strand and get me stranded somewhere else. There's one lady, man, she told me to come there. She's a TI. I get there. She tells me, um, and that, this happened in 2018. Like I went to like six different places and got perked everywhere and left her stranded in a state where I didn't know nobody or nothing. And this one lady, it tripped me out. She invited me over her house. And this was in uh, Pennsylvania. I went, I, I took a plane there and I went to her house. She had me a pack of cigarettes, asked me what my favorite food was before I got there. I said, bacon and eggs. So I get there and she says, well, I want you to let you let, let you know there's there's cloakers in the house and there is a thing called cloaking. And I don't know how real it is. So I don't even want to say whether or not it's real because I've never looked into it. Anyway, she's got this popcorn can full of butcher knives and she starts throwing them different places and sticking them in the wall. And she's and she's saying she's throwing them at these cloakers. So. About two hours later, she says, oh, man, you a perp. Get out of here before I start throwing knives at you. And I'm like, so I'm stranded in there. 
And you know what I'm saying? So, and then every time you try to, I try to tell somebody about it, I end up getting them put in the mental hospital. Um, I was in the mental hospital a few weeks back um, because man, I was so wore out from, from walking and stuff. Cause these gang stalkers stalk me and you got to figure V2K's in my head telling me I'm going to get kidnapped and murdered. Then my wife's actually texting me on the phone out of the blue saying it's happening. So on top of these gang stalkers, I, I'm in fight or flight mode. So I'll go two or three days in fight or flight mode. You know what I'm saying? So the, a red car, all that stuff, man. And you know what I'm saying? I, I was so wore out. I, I jumped on a train and fell asleep. Well, the train started going and it, and it, man, it stopped in the middle of nowhere. So I was so exhausted. I said, fuck it. I'm going to take a chance. So and you, cause you know, you take a chance if you go to a hospital. So I called the police and told them I was suicidal. I was going to jump in front of a train and they picked me up. And I know I, that's a failure as a TI. I should have never done it, but I'm lucky because when I was in the hospital, they let me kept my, keep my phone. And I did a live video right in front of the nurses and said, look, if anything happens to me, I'm at this hospital and y'all know what happened. And I put it live on Twitter and I told, and the nurse is like, what are you doing? I said, I'm putting a live video on Twitter. So boom, they took my phone, but I heard them talking and saying, I heard one of the nurses talking and saying, you just, you just heard what he, we can't do that no more. You know what I'm saying? So I don't know what they were talking about doing, but oh yeah, they did come to me in the hospital at first. And right after I did that and man, they came in and said, look, we're going to give you, we're going to give you these shots. And they put two shots in my thighs. I passed out and woke up like a day later. Um, but anyway, I get gang stalked heavily. And they got V2K of my wife's voice in, in my head. And they got my wife saying, well, we're going to kill you. Or I can't wait to see you get murdered in front of me. And they started incorporating my sister's voice in there. And my sister's voice always talks about God. and says, look, man, God ain't on your side. Every time I'm trying to do something, read the Bible or something, God ain't on your side, man. You might as well give up. If God was on your side, you wouldn't be going through this. So, yeah, because, it's horrible. That, well, they're demons, aren't they, David? Yeah. They're, 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 they're attacks, demons. Man, they're... It makes my brain feel like I'm frying. I can't concentrate. You know what I'm saying? And I noticed lately what they'll do, too, is if I'm talking to somebody and it's an important conversation, they'll, man, they'll put me to sleep. Like, I know the difference between being tired or getting put to sleep. Like it's like sleeping gas. Like, Oh, and they do that like three or four times a day. And, and I had to tell my friends, look, I'm going to set my alarm for 20 minutes and take a power nap and I'll be back up. So yeah, they do that shit. And then, you know, they've been doing this off and on. And in 2018, I meant to tell this story too. This TI invited me to her house. So I went to her house. I stayed there for about a month. Everything was cool. When she comes to me, well, I, I kept I keep a gun on me. I had a 25. I don't keep a gun on me no more because I can't get one. But if I had access, I would. I had a 25 on me. And I'm thinking this TI is legit. And so after a month, she comes to me and she pulls me in the bedroom. She says, David, look, the dude we've been living with, which is my uncle, he's been molesting me and stuff. And I didn't know how to tell you. So, so I'm like, molesting you? I said, man, I'm going to go handle this. She's like, no, 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 don't go handle this. Don't go handle this. What we'll do is at night, I'm going to steal his truck and we'll just leave. So I had this TI I was friends with, and I want to talk about her one, one real quick because it's real important. I talked with her daily. Her, you can look her up. Her, her name was Lynette Castle. I talked to her for two years straight, and we helped each other. She lived in Vallejo, California, and she saw one of my videos in 2018 and bless her heart. She used to work, she worked, she used to be in the Navy. And if you, and man, I wish I, if you look at my Twitter page, I got the three page letter she wrote me before she died. She was murdered and she was putting it on Facebook that, um, and I'm connecting these stories. So don't worry, I'm not going. She was putting it on Facebook that this dude was gang stalking her and all this shit was happening to her, do weapons and all that, and that they were going to murder her. Well, in the comments, and I can take screenshots of these comments. They were all calling her crazy. And I'm and I'm friends with her sister, Sh Tashana Williams, this day. 
And so she ends up murdered and cut up by this dude, the same dude she was posting was gang stalking her. And um, the dude's name's Charles Thorpe. And but I, she was dear to me. I keep her letter in my pocket on the streets everywhere I go because I know she's looking down on me. So anyway, she got murdered and put in this box and they found her in this dude's house, the same dude she was posting on Facebook. Everybody was saying she's crazy. And if you look at the comments, her sister got on there after she was murdered and said, now you think she's crazy? You know what I'm saying? She was a good woman. And um, anyway, she helped me through a lot because there was times, man, I, I really wanted to do suicide. She would, she just kept pressing me, David. He, man, we can't do that. So God rest her soul. So anyway, when she stole the car, we were going to California because she said she, Lynette said she had a houseboat that we could stay in. So on the way to California, we break down in Louisiana. So I know how to jump trains because I've jumped trains before when I'm gang stalked so bad. Sometimes if I can't get away on foot, I'll jump a train just, just to get away from them for a minute and cut my phone off. Um, but the do weapons and shit stay on, though. You, can, you can't go nowhere in this program. I don't care if you go to Asia. Anyway, um, so in the stolen car breaks down so i'm like well let's jump a train so we jumped this train we end up in livonia louisiana and um we get lost in the swamp for 30 days i because I'm, I'm like well let's go in the swamp and come out at night and jump a train well she drops the phone in the water so we didn't have no phone to gps our way out and you know me being a man i'm like well, let's go so we went in the wood we're getting deeper deeper in the swamp in louisiana 28 days we was in there and I, man, you got to figure Louisiana's got places where there's no electric, no electric pole or cell phone towers. The V2K stopped and the douche stopped. We were so far back in the woods. So anyway, we found a way out, out of the woods and I, I find this little cabin and I'm like, well, look, I'm going to go in there and see if there's any food because we were starving. You know what I'm saying? And there was cabins back in the woods. But nobody, they were flooded out. Nobody had been there. They were destroyed, but there's still cans of food and stuff. And that's how we survived. So I, every time I would go in a cabin, though, I would tell her, I was like, look, stay on the outskirts of this thing. I'm going in. If somebody's in there, I'll take the lick and get shot or whatever. So I was looking out for her, too, because I'm thinking, but I did notice she wasn't complaining about no weapons or nothing. The whole 30 days I was with her at first. So, boom. So, when I get back from the cabin with the food, she's gone. There's people in the woods hunting me. So I'm like, what the hell? I jump back. I jump down on the riverbank and I'm walking. And needless to say, she's done went and said that I raped her and kidnapped her. And if you look up Crotz, Crotz, K-R-O-T-Z, Springs, kidnapping hoax, if you look that up, and put St. Landry Parish, because I'm telling this in case somebody thinks I actually did. She um, she got in trouble five years because she fought, they, the police broke her and she said she was lying. She was trying to get me killed. So anyway, so when I got back in the woods and she, I jumped on the riverbank, this dude comes back. I'm just going to quickly share the screen uh, because this is it. Yep. Boom, yeah, everything okay. is real. Thank you. Thank you, Roy. No, no, not at all. What I'll do is I'll copy that. I'll stop sharing that, and I'll put that in the uh, the chat. I appreciate because that. It, no, not a problem, mate. Anything you want recording? me to Google, or it's not a problem. Are we still recording? Yes, mate. Okay, so when just I, stop. after she went off and said that, I, I came back. She was gone. Wasn't nobody there. I hear people in the woods. So I jumped on the riverbank, and I'm walking. This dude comes riding down the river on the riverbank with an AR-15 strapped around his neck, and he, and he stops. I'm hiding in the bushes, and he's pointing at the gun at me for about 20 or 30 seconds. So, boom, I shot first. Hit him in the shoulder. He shot me in the head. Needless to say, when I woke up in the hospital, I said, man, I said, why am I handcuffed? The dude shot me first. And they're like, well, did you kidnap that girl? I was like, kidnap? Yeah, that, this lady ran off and said, you kidnapped her. So I gave alibis. I was like, no, look, we were stopped by the police in Livonia and um, questioned. And if I kidnapped her, why didn't she say something then? So they went and inter interviewed her and broke her down. She admitted she, admitted she was lying. So I, I wow. ended up doing four, four years in jail. And, and 
and they 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 dropped it because the dude tried to say that I was on his property when he when he pointed the gun at me and that I had kidnapped somebody and I really didn't kidnap me. So they were hunting me in the woods and they took it upon themselves to be vigilantes and all false pretenses. So boom, so I got out this year in June and my mom said I could live with her and stuff. Well, my mom started uh, gaslighting me. Um, she would tell me, well, hey, will you look this up on Google? And I would look it up on Google and she'd be like, you're a stupid motherfucker. Why do you have to look stuff up on Google? She just told me to look stuff up on Google. Then she would move things around. She would she would steal shit in my, out of my room and hold it for a few days. And I would think, where'd my stuff go? I would think I lost it. And then two days later, she'd put it back where it's supposed to be. Then she started blackmailing. And, all, and these videos are on my YouTube channel. I got videos where I actually recorded her doing this stuff. She, she, she told me, if you don't get money from your dad, and this is a recording on YouTube. It's called Black, My Mom Blackmailing Me for Money, and it's her. If you don't get get money from your dad, uh, I'm going to have you committed. And she kept on doing that. And then she would tell me, and this is on YouTube too, uh, me and my, me and your wife. If you want to share the links, Dave, I'd be happy to. Oh, no. But but, but what I'll do is um, when we stick this up, it's going to go up on free sites with your permission. We're going to put it on YouTube. I think it's Tumblr and another site I can't remember. And uh, what we'll do is we'll put the links, any links you want to add, we'll put them into the description, Dave. Okay. Is there a way I can add links? Uh, 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 yes, there is. Put them in the chat, Dave. All right, right hold in on the one chat. Second. Okay, mate. But no, nah, my mom would tell me, you're going to be kidnapped. That's the same thing my B2K tells them. You're going to be kidnapped, um, and me and your wife is in on it and all that. And I I, I got the videos right here. Hold on one. You want me to put them on there? Yeah, if you, if you put them in the chat, and then okay. I can uh, – the, 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 then the people that are going to watch us can see the links, and uh, they can click on the link. All right. But so my mom, I'm fresh out of prison and my mom has never been there in my whole life. Um, but she tells me, oh, you can come. Everything's going to go good. I want you to be my son, this and that. And as soon as I get there, she starts gaslighting me and, and all that. I got to put the chat right here. Put them in the chat. Yeah, if you put the if you put the links into the chat, that's it. You put it into oh, the chat, right. Dave. I'm going to get another one. Uh, so, well, no, what, what, what I'll do is quickly, is I'll quickly share the screen, Dave. So anything, right, there's the, there's the link. Uh, okay, this is cool. what you're, th this is um, your mum saying. So what I'll do is I'll copy it as well. I'll stop sharing. And um, I'll also put that link in the uh, the chat there as well. Uh, and what people can do, uh, Dave, is in this the is chat. The can... videos. Pardon, mate. They can look at all my videos from one link. It, well, exactly. Yeah. Yeah. So, 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 what they can basically do is click on the link, and they'll see your stream, or they can subscribe to your page. Right. So, the in the videos, you'll see my mom, and some of the videos you need to put headphones in because. I couldn't let her know I was videotaping, so I was being slick about it. So sometimes her voice is faint, but you, you'll hear her saying exactly what I say in the title. But she was started telling me, look, your mom, we're, me and your wife's going to kidnap you. You better watch out and blackmailing me for money. And she kept telling me, look, if you don't get me no money from your dad, because my dad has got some, he, he's got some money, you know, he owned a business and he sold it. And um, she was, blackmailing me and one day we went to walmart me and my stepdad and my mom and this is how i ended up homeless and like i said she's been gaslighting me threatening me all through the day and and when i when my stepdad would get home she would say i've been mean to her and there's plenty of ti's out there that were friends during me during the time and would be on the phone on video chat that know that's not the truth and would hear her and she tortured me so anyway um 
Yeah, she was blackmailing me. She'd be like, well, look, we and me and my wife are in on your kidnapping. You better watch out. So we went to Walmart one day after she asked me to get money from my dad. And she goes straight to the bathroom for 30 minutes. And me and my stepdad are sitting there. And I'm asking my stepdad, I'm like, what's up? Then she says, well, look, I don't want to shop. And she had told me that she was taking me to Walmart to be kidnapped. So when we go back to the car after 30 minutes of her being in the bathroom, she calls the police and tell us, tells them, I'm threatening to hit her. Well, the police looked at my videos that I had and took my side, but told me, look, you can't go back there because it's a domestic situation. So I, I end up, and you'll see all my YouTube videos, me under a bridge, because I videoed, put a YouTube video about me being under the bridge. I put a video out under with me under the bridge, and I ended up homeless. And that's why I've been homeless ever since and gang stalking. Man, they've been gang stalking me hard. Um, and um, every time I'd ask for directions in Memphis, because I really don't know my way around Memphis. I ain't never been there. My mom lived there her whole life. But, see, my mom gave me over to my dad when I was two and said, here, you take care of him. And then she came out of the picture while I was in jail. Oh, I want to help you. And when I got there, she was so hateful to me. It wasn't funny. But anyway, that's how I ended up homeless. She pulled that move at Walmart because I wouldn't call my dad and get her some money. So, and she said, oh, if you, you know, man, man, man to man, Dave, I, I, I'm so sorry it's been so shit for you. My, 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 my heart's with you, mate. It, 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 to, to hear it, it's like, it's, it, it's so hard to hear, Dave. Yeah. You know, I, I, but I know you're speaking from the heart. Yeah, it is. You know how it is, and and if it wasn't for me meeting some some real TI people, then you know what I'm saying. I probably would have done off myself because oh yeah, that's another thing I did too during due to this program. Um, I went through a phase. It got so bad with this doing stuff. I don't know if y'all can see it, but uh, I cut my own throat. I had 17 oh, staples and stitches. Trying to kill myself. Somebody found me, and I and I lived through that. And I cut my wrist. I don't know if y'all can see the scars on my wrist, but yeah, you there? Okay. Yeah, listening to you. Had, no, but it's four, so horrible to hear. I had blood transfusions on both of them. I was really trying to kill myself. You know what I'm saying? Because I'm tired of this program, and it wouldn't be for a couple of Ti friends. And if they're watching, they know who they are. I probably would have offed myself again because this, God is, this bless is horrible. Them. And this God bless horrible. them and you, mate. Yes, it is. Being hit with do electronic pulses going through your brain, feeling like your brain, you know what I'm saying, burning the hell out of you. And then you got voices in your head trying to make decisions for you and telling you're going to get kid, kidnapped. And then you got gang stalkers all around. And then when you ask people for directions or stuff, they'll send you the wrong way. You know what I'm saying? I had a friend and he bought me an airplane ticket right when I got homeless. And and so this dude called a, called a uh, Uber for me. One of my TI friends called an Uber for me. I'm at Walmart waiting on the Uber because they send you the license plate and everything. When the Uber pulls up and sees me, he sits there for a minute. I went to get in his car. He pulled off and canceled the Uber. So I called taxis to get there to the airport. All the taxis said that they were busy. Or well, actually, one of them said, uh, hold on a minute, I'm going to send one your way. And then all of a sudden he said, oh, no, nah, we're busy, and hung up on me. So I start to – it's nine miles. So I'm like, well, that ain't nothing. I can walk nine miles, which I can. So I put it in the GPS, and it keeps telling me the airport's getting closer. I end up in Collierville. If you look up Memphis and Collierville, that's a whole other town. And this police pulled me over walking and said what are you because it's like two in the morning what are you doing and i said well i'm walking to the airport you're going the wrong way brother and the gps was telling me i'm going the right way the whole time that's what they do to my gps though every time they done it in 2018 they hack it so i went the wrong way and missed my plane so yeah all this stuff's happened so yeah it's crazy man oh yeah i took i took 200 pills and, and um, that was my first suicide attempt. I was in a coma five days. And the they were saying my brain had low activity. My dad was an hour away because he lives in Tennessee and I was an hour, was an hour away to pull the plug. And I came to, when I came to, I ripped my catheter out because I didn't know where I was at. And I argued with the doctor. 
But anyway, that's enough of my story. I'm sure y'all have got the um, the jinx of how much hell this is, and and it needs to be stopped. You know what I'm saying? I'm tired of getting hit hit with these weapons. I'm tired of being mistreated everywhere I go in the community by gang stalkers and and people who think they're doing the community a good job because these gang stalkers are told that they're better in the community. That they make us look like terrorists or pedophiles or I don't know what they're making exactly. me look like. Yeah, and they think they're doing the community a favor, and they're really not. They're hurting innocent people. You know, Dave, I, I'm so pleased that you've been so straight and so honest. And I know you're a very, very respectable gentleman. Yes, and we uh, all no, are. I know, I know, I know you are, mate, and you're very highly thought of. I promise you. you, Dave. You are. You're very highly. People think the world of you, Dave. You're a real person. You, 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 you. I think of you as my little sister. <laughs> hey, if I'm ever, <laughs> hey, if I'm. If I'm ever not in the TI community on Twitter or Facebook or stop doing YouTube and everybody loses. That and, ain't going to happen, that. Dave. Dave, that ain't going to happen because you've got a lot of friends and they're going to keep in contact with you now. And hopefully you've got a good circle of people and the your circle of friends will build now. Yeah. And, uh, and, mate, I'd love to have a pint and a smoke with you. <laughs> no, no, I, 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 I oh, would. one day we can. Yeah, likewise, you know, yeah. but 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 the silly shit, mate, you've got to cut out. You're a fucking powerful man, and you've got to respect your life. You're a fucking nice person. Thank you. You've man. had a lot of shit, and that's got to go. And you've got to turn that corner. You've got good people in your life now, mate. And uh, and once you get out of there, reach out to your pals, mate. You, you've got good friends. They think a lot of you, the TI community, does. Thank you, man. Not I'm at all. When I get out, so Dave, I don't know. We, we, we had, but but let's put let's put a shout out for you. And uh, a few days before you get out, we've got to try and get you some help. You know, so you, well, not at all. Put a shout out, and I know there's people that are going to help you and want to help you. Because you're a real nice bloke. People, there's some nice people who knew I was getting out with no clothes, and they sent me money, and I bought clothes. Oh, wonderful. Money. Yeah, so, you know, yeah. I, if somebody could help me out with a place to stay, I'd appreciate it. I would hold my own. Right, so, so what you've got to do, Dave, is when you know that you're being released, you've got to let me know so I can pass it on to the TI community, plus yourself tweeting it out, and where you're going to head for, so that know. hopefully people will be able to help you on the way. I don't know where to head at this point. <laughs> so, 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 where do you think you would be comfortable? Where, where do you think you would fit in? And where do you think you would like to be? I have no clue at this moment. Right. We're trying because, to have but, a think because, about hey, that. The reason I have no clue at this moment is because, like, I'm two or three weeks out right now. So I try not to think about it because I'm trying not to stress it right now. I'm trying okay, to enjoy right. the whole time. And because the yeah, only but, reason... Yeah, but Dave, you've got to come to us and you've got to say, Roy, can you help? Right. And, and, and put it out so that we can put things in place. And, uh, and because since we've been communicating, Dave, a lot of people have got help. And uh, because people understand our situations and they're willing to reach out. Right. You know, so please do, mate. And don't ever think about those fucking pills and doing knives and shit anymore. Oh, you, no, you, you're, 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 you're worth too much. Hey, you know what you're, I figured? You're, you're a diamond. You know what I figured? I figure every time I try to kill myself, I fail anyway, so there ain't no sense to keep trying. <laughs> <laughs> Real oh, but, um, they, 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 they wouldn't let me, Dave. Because I, I, I thought to myself, I, I couldn't see any point in hanging on, but they didn't want me to go. So right. now I think to myself, well, all I could do is help others. Because I thought they were going to get rid of me anyway. So I want right. to help other people along my way. And I'm sure you will, Dave. And that's why you're doing all this the same as me. I yeah. don't get nothing out of it. I get see, a satisfaction I... knowing that 
we're going to help one another and move right. forward and stop even this if it's a, You know, I see people going through it on Twitter, and what I'll do is I'll tell them I'm praying for them, and I'll stop right there and pray for them because even that counts. Exactly. You know? Yeah, because I know I know how it feels to be be there. You know what I'm saying? Exactly. Uh, do, do you know what, Dave? If there was a McDonald's round the corner and a pub, I'd take you for a Big Mac, a bag of chips, <laughs> and then we'd go for a bike. Yeah, I hope one day we can meet. That'd be great. I, 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 on my heart, mate, I would love to. And yeah. I, I know, I, I know, we'd have a few beers, talk a lot of shit, and have a smoke. And, and we, we, we I, I know we're, we're good pals anyway. Well, uh, yeah, well. you're a good. I, I know you're a good man, mate. You know you I you've try. spoken highly of it. It's so nice, and you're refreshing because you're straight. And you know because in our community you've got a decent people, and the majority, at ninety nine point, you get an ass wipe, but you get them in every situation that where you are. But sometimes yep. that their, their, their state isn't isn't performing quite well, and we know how that is. Yeah, you know because I oh that 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 they they muted me, so I couldn't speak to people. So I was just using facial expressions. So the last seven eight years, I've been rehabilitating my power of speech because they took my speech away. Wow. And, uh, so 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 when I see people that can speak can listen, can converse. I was so jealous of that, Dave. I bet. Because I couldn't do it. But when I see it now, and when I see it, it, it's so beautiful. You know, there is a good part of this life. It's just that there's so much wickedness. And we've all found each other. we got to help one another. Because we know if you go to the wrong people, they're going to shaft you. Yep. And they're going to fill you up with pills that shouldn't even be in your system and your body's going to fail. You know, we, we, you, we got to eat well. We got to chat with one another within our community, have friends. And like, we're going to find you a place to go to, Dave. No, we'll find no. you a place. And you know, well, I promise you, because I, I, I'll find help by hook or crook to help you. <sighs> I promise you that. I'd be grateful. Sorry, I've got to stop this for a sec. Well, I, I just want to say thanks very much, Dave. Um, you're an absolute sweetheart. The TI community thinks the world of you. I think the world of you, brother. Is there anything else you want to say before you wrap up? All I want to say is if you're a T.I. and you're going through it, just know every night when I get ready to go to sleep, I pray for all of us because I know how struggle is, and that's all I'd like to say. Uh, bless your heart, Dave, and thanks ever so much. And, and God bless, and I'll speak later, mate. God all bless right. you, Dave. Cheers. God bless.